Yeah, what's up for a nightcap? Chill, you know, kick back. Welcome to the Nightcap. I'm Carolina Sanchez, and we've got a very interesting topic for you tonight. We're talking autoimmune disease. I know that's not very nightcappy, but 23.5 million Americans suffer from them, and it's affecting their sex lives, their relationships, and it's everything from lupus to rheumatoid arthritis to MS. You've heard of them, and you may have them if you haven't gotten checked. But we do have a doctor here who knows all about it because she's suffered it and come out the other end. All right, so we've got Dr. Brooke Goldner here. I mean, you actually suffered through lupus. When were you diagnosed? I was diagnosed at 16 years old, and by the time I was 16, I was already suffering for a while. I actually started getting migraines around 14, and the bad kind. I'd be sick for a week, throwing up, nothing could help me. And then I started getting rashes and moving pain throughout my joints. And, you know, I thought maybe, maybe it was, you know, too much work at volleyball practice or something, but I'm not actually athletic and I sat bench for the team. So it wasn't really like I was getting sports injuries or anything. There was no explanation. So finally one day I'd been out in the sun all day, terrible migraine, rash was blooming, just felt so bad. And my parents went, all right, something's really wrong. Took me to the emergency room. And that's when they diagnosed me. And at the time, not only did, did they diagnose me with the lupus, but they told me that I was in kidney failure. So I went from rashes and pain and some headaches to being told after a biopsy that I was in stage four kidney failure. And the nephrologist at the time actually gave me six months to live if I didn't enter into experimental treatments um, because it was really that severe. He said it was, it, my kidneys were failing so quickly that within six months they'd be gone and I'd be on dialysis or I wouldn't make it. Wow. And for people who don't know what lupus is, what exactly is it doing to your healthy cells? So your immune system is normally on your side, right? It's gonna go out there, it's gonna attack any invaders, a virus, bacteria, it's gonna respond to those attacks, it's gonna keep you safe. But with autoimmune diseases like lupus, the immune system gets a bit confused and it can start attacking your own cells instead. So even when I was a kid, I kind of imagined it, mm. like my immune system be going around like, hey, what's that? You know, and they go, I think it's a kidney. Nah, let's get it. You know, <laughs> and then yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> go in and it can very effectively destroy organs. And while the kidneys are a common uh, organ that's attacked, it could be your brain, your heart, your lungs. And I've helped people as young as 11 years old with lupus throughout their body attacking multiple organs at a time. And it can be life threatening and people don't really live as long a life. And, and while they're alive, they have a lot of symptoms that can cause a great amount of suffering. Yeah. And I mean, you were suffering for two years before you got the diagnosis and you're a teenager. So what was that like, you know, getting that news at six? I think at 16, I didn't really, wasn't really able to understand when they said six months to live, all of that. My family, of course, felt it more. I was kind of in shock. Yeah. You know, I wanted my face to clear up. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know, You're 16. like, I want these rashes on. Yeah, like, I don't want I the want rashes to go. in high school. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I didn't really understand that existential threat. But I can say, you know, I, I remember being at the nephrologist's office with my mother and my grandmother. Now, my grandmother's a Holocaust survivor. She came here as a refugee to give her family a better life. My mom was five when they came in on a boat through Ellis Island, right? So I'm first born in America, going to live the American dream. Mm -hmm. And we're sitting in that office where the nephrologist gives us the news about my kidneys failing and, you know, experimental treatments or death, horrible thing. And I remember going home that night and my grandmother was so tough. She survived the war. She was, mm -hmm. I never saw her cry. I never saw, you know, she just was so strong. The only time I've ever seen her cry was that night when she was on her knees, just begging God to, to spare me and to take her instead. And it was just, I mean, it just, and it's something that I teach my patients now is that you don't go through disease by yourself. Mm -mm. Everyone who loves you suffers. And it's why you need to fight for yourself and take care of yourself because everybody needs you. Was, is that when it set in? Was it seeing your grandmother break down? Because obviously you were thinking about the, the aesthetics, the looks, you know, the, the, pain. Things, the things that we yeah. think about as, as teens and not the existential, like, is that when it set in, just seeing her break down? Uh, that was definitely a moment that lives with me forever. Mm. And thankfully, listen, we both made it. She lived to 99. Ooh. And I'm about to be 46. I'm hey, still here. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah. You know, but um, it was definitely, I, I think it taught me at the time to try to not show my pain as much, mm. actually, because I saw how much it caused suffering in my family. So I just wanted to make them proud and to live well. And that's one thing that having Holocaust survivor family tells me is I still had a good. You know, they were in prison camps. They had their family members murdered. I had good doctors. I had 
hospitals to go to. I was living a middle class life, being able to go to school and achieve. And so I kind of put it in this box where it's something I have to deal with. I have to get these, I, they gave me experimental chemotherapy to try to shut off my immune system. You know, normally chemotherapy is for people with cancer, but the side effect is they die of an infection because they have no immune system. Mm. So they thought, what if we reboot her? What if we shut the immune system down with high dose of steroids and chemotherapy? And then when there's no immune system left, maybe if it reboots, maybe it'll come back on normally, right? Like when your computer's glitching, yeah. you shut it Restart. off, you say a prayer, turn it back on, hey, Zoom's working, right? Yeah. <laughs> just, that's what the IT always says, is like, hey, uh, did, you, did, you, did you reboot? It's magic, It's right? magic, yeah. Yeah, so that's what they were thinking, and so I kind of had to figure out, okay, since my family told me that I am gonna finish high school, I, am, I do have a purpose to give, I have to keep succeeding and achieving in my life, that we don't get to choose how much time we have, but we choose how we spend it. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of went, okay, so, I have chemotherapy on Friday. Uh, I have a test on Tuesday, so I got to study to make sure because I'm going to be puking for days. So I got to. So I just kind of organized my achieving and my life around my medicines and my treatments, and I just felt lucky. I, I, that's what my grandmother always taught me: is that we're lucky. Well, you also brought us some goodies because we've got. We, we like to have drinks on this show, and typically they're alcoholic. But you've got a daily drinker that we're actually going to blend up coming up next. I'm very excited about this, keeping me healthy. Welcome back to the Nightcap. We are now behind the bar with Dr. Goldner, and you're gonna make a delicious smoothie for me that's healthy and I need it, obviously, and you guys need it at home. But before we get into it, mm -hmm. you're actually lupus free. I am, actually this month I'm celebrating 17 years lupus free. Right. How? How? How, <laughs> Sway? I need the how. Well, I fell in love. That's Ooh, what did it. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, uh, so I met my husband 17 years ago. Well, no, 18 years ago. We got a little time before we got married. Mm -hmm. And he's this amazing guy. He's also a researcher. And his study was human metabolism. Mm. He said, why is it that we know what giraffe should eat? We know what lions should eat. Nobody knows what humans should eat, right? Everybody, yeah. <laughs> high carb, low Hello. carb, high protein. Low, nobody knows what we're supposed to eat. And it was driving him crazy because he was going, he was in exercise science and he was getting his master's and he said, there has to be optimal nutrition for humans. Absolutely. So that's what he was obsessed with. Good. And then I met him and I was obsessed with him. Mm. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> so we fell in love very quickly and within a month of meeting, he was talking marriage and I really was, oh, and I felt it. No, you should. Both of y'all? Oh, oh. Oh, From, baby, okay. Yeah, when we met, it was one of those things where our eyes locked and we both just started crying. It's like mystical stuff. Yeah, still to this day, we've been together for so long and if we look at each other in the eye for more than a few seconds, we just, one tear. Ooh. It's just, yeah. Soulmates of five of her. Yeah, wow. he's amazing. And so we, we just, we were in love. We knew it was meant to be. But I had to explain to this man at 28 years old, that I have this disease where at this point I'd already had blood clots, many strokes. I was taking injections every day for blood thinners to stay alive, not drop dead in medical school. Oh my God. So I said, you know, I, I'm, I'm already very sick. I still had chronic kidney issues. I still had arthritis, all that. But, you know, I was told I could never have children and that I wasn't going to live a long life. I'd probably be disabled by my 40s. And it's kind of a tough thing to say to someone that you're going to have to take care of me before I die too young, can't have your kids. And he just, you know, it took him a, a few seconds and he looked at me and he said, you know, I'd rather live a short life with you than a lifetime with anybody else. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I said, let's get married. Let's get married right now. Right now. Let's do yeah. it. And I've always told my patients, don't, you know, take love. You don't choose who gets to love you. And sometimes people think they're going to be a burden. I said, if someone wants to love you, take it. Mm. Let it in, you know. Absolutely. And so then we decided we're going to elope to Maui with just the people who are going to cry, closest family and friends. But it was Maui. And I was wearing this coat, which can hide a lot, but hospital food is really good for being overweight and sick. You eat that stuff, it's good for business, you know? Oh my gosh. <laughs> so I, I said, I wanna be on that metabolism diet that you created, and mm -hmm. he said, okay. But we had to make some changes. He actually still had some meat in it, but it was lots of uh, foods that had vitamins and minerals and things your body uses for cellular repair and, and metabolism. So we changed the diet a little bit to suit me. Yeah. Now his diet worked for people losing weight, never healed anybody. I did it with our little adjustments, and within three months, my labs were normal. My kidneys were fully normal. Um, and this was after 12 years of being sick. I had no three more. months. Yeah, I had no more blood clots. There was no signs of lupus. All the lupus antibodies were gone. And it worked. I went from a size 11 to a size three in three months. I was ripped for our wedding. And this is now 17 years later. I've had two healthy kids. I have never had a relapse. I feel better at 45 than I did through my teens and 20s. 
And uh, so, yeah, so, <laughs> so falling in love, it changed everything. And so, you know, I, I believe it's unethical to tell someone just do what I did and hope it works. Uh, as, as a former patient, as a scientist, as a doctor, we had to prove it. So after I had my first son, we said, let's go back to the science and see what does this nutrition have to do with cellular repair in the immune system? Mm -hmm. And once we could replicate it in volunteers every time, we decided to create a protocol and then we released it to the public for free because uh, free doing doing the right work baby yes well i said you got to be able to save your life and he says you got to be able to save your wife so we create free resources for the public with uh, free recipes. I'm going to show you one of our recipes today. Yes, show that me. That it's actually not hard. When it comes down to it, your body's programmed to repair itself, but it needs tools. Like a Lego manual has the instructions, mm -hmm. but you need the pieces. Well, your DNA has the instructions for cellular repair, but you need the ingredients. If you don't have one of the ingredients, it can't do the job. Right. But even 12 years later, decades later, if you give your body what it needs, it can repair the damage and you can get your health back. And at this point, we've helped thousands of people all over the world heal from lupus, RA, MS. I mean, it's just incredible. Heal, heal, heal. autoimmune disease. Yeah, get off their meds and live healthy lives the way I get to do. You're watching the Nightcaps, don't go anywhere. So the key is that this is, again, it's a delivery system for the nutrition. So the primary goal is going to get the greens in. I already preloaded it, and I saw your eyes getting wide as I put more and more greens. Yeah, so we're, our we're not done with the hobby greens. only got this much, and she Isn't laughed. that cute? She yeah. laughed. She's like, let's put two ounces in a bowl and then call it a day. No, um, so I actually like to put a lot more in there, so we're going to use this too. All the way to the top. No, no, we'll leave a little bit of room for the fruit. A little bit, a little bit. All right, you'll be fine, I okay, promise. I'll be fine. Okay. I'll be fine. So, so if you're making this at home, you want about three quarters of it to be the greens uh, because that's your vitamins your minerals or antioxidants that's all the good stuff right then you need omega-3s omega-3s actually create a fast metabolism you ever hear fat's bad for you yes I've well, heard that many a time this is a fat that makes you lose fat it creates a oh. fast metabolism and we've tested it thousands of calories from omega-3s and it just makes you burn fat faster it also makes you repair damage faster and it's a precursor to your anti-inflammatory immune system so this is chia seeds you can also use flax seeds for omega-3. Flax seeds also has phytoestrogens, which is great for women, protects us from breast cancer. But this will work. Now, I usually say about a handful, but they gave me this nice spoon, so I won't put my hand in there. But uh, that's a good place to start, all right? It does make the smoothie a bit thick, though, so. I mean, that's fine. I like it thick. <laughs> that's what I heard. So, <laughs> okay. Yes, doctor. So, <laughs> uh, and then we're gonna use water. This is also necessary for metabolism, for all the chemical reactions that take place for healing. Most people who are dehydrated are not thirsty. It's a bad sign if you're not thirsty. Um, but it also is the primary reason that people have constipation and headaches. So don't go to the pharmacy, drink your water. And this is another place to hide the water. I just say put the water to the level of the greens. Really? Yeah, that'll so help. So is this serving for one person, two, three, the whole house? Well, I would like people to have one of these a day, the blender. So you have some at breakfast. You have some as a snack, you kind of let yourself have it throughout the day. That way, this is for your cells. Whatever you eat next is for your taste buds. Wow. But think of it this way, you got 100 trillion cells, yeah. right? You don't want to, you need to give them a little bit more, if, especially if you've been starving them for your, most of your life. Oh, wow, yeah. People with autoimmune disease, if you had a little bit of this, it's like bringing a water gun to a forest fire, right? Wow. We need We need a lot. So, yes, I'd love you to drink it by the end of the day, but start where you can. You know, if, if you're not used to fiber, um, you know, for most people, it gives you a glorious bowel movement. For some people, it's a little bit much. So you just start where you can, okay. get used to it. <laughs> so, right. <laughs> we, we won't take you after the show. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. Now, banana is really good. You want the ones from the spots. I learned these as banana bread bananas, but they're going to be in the smoothie. They're sweeter when they have the spots. So we'll put those it's in funny. there. My mother always says, oh, that's, that's way too sweet. Now, you've got but to in get a when smoothie, they're green. It's good. Well, with the greens, you want the sweet. Yeah, I you definitely the, need the sweet. You're like, please, more like, extra. This is all salad right now. <laughs> I'm drinking a salad. Well, How many bananas? Well, I'm being nice to you, right? It's oh, your first time. Oh, what a sweetie. It's your thank first you, thank time. You. We're going to be It'll gentle. It'll be a, a pleasant all right. Do you like pineapple? Minister. I love pineapple. Okay, I love cool. mango. I love it all. So, Can any of them be frozen? or Actually, it, that's what I'm using. Frozen? If you oh. use frozen fruit, then you don't need to add ice and you can have more fruit in it. It's going to taste better. Mm. If you don't use frozen fruit, then you're going to want to add ice because if this cooks, that's really gross. Um, you don't want a hot smoothie. We right. don't want a cooked salad. No. Right. Now, normally I'd be using my hands to shove this down to give you more. Use room. your hands. Mm. Put it in there. I saw you wash your hands. Go ahead. Yeah, well, all right, let's like, try it. I'm trying to be polite I got for TV it. service. Okay, let's see. All right. All right. And then it'll be fun that's if we get this. That's not going to fit. What, what are you? So again, the fruit is just for flavor. 
And you'd be amazed how good, it, I know you look skeptical, and you can taste it. All right, this is gonna be loud though. I'm gonna blend this up. Go now ahead. this is a high power blender, so it'll actually make it like a restaurant smoothie. If you've got a weaker blender, you might be chewing a bit, so I, I do recommend people I who are gonna wanna be chewing a use smoothie. this for your lifestyle that you get a good quality blender. Okay, sounds good. All right, I'm gonna turn this on. All right, here we go. Wow, that's fast. Yeah, Vitamix is very strong. Oh, it's Vitamix. Okay. Are you scared? Right. You nervous? No, 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 no. All right, no, let me no, find I'm something fancy so you feel okay. A little fancy schmance. Look at and that. those are deeper. It's a margarita glass, so it's a deeper, so right. it's not just. I want you to feel like you're having the margarita vibes, yes. all right? Okay, let's see how I did. So let's pour that in there. Oh, it's pretty and thick. All right. Okay, now if you drink it this way, you get the mustache. We also have straws in case you weren't looking for that. Now, where right. did they go? These oh, straws there. are here. Oh, that's a skinny look. straw. We might, oh, look, at, look at that. <laughs> that's how thick it is, folks. <laughs> bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> All it's right. up for late night. There we go. Cheers. All right, cheers, my lady. Come on, that's good. That's, that's good it's good right that's good you would never it tastes like pineapple mm. pineapple mango the bananas coming through i mean obviously i i do taste the greens not gonna lie it's in there but it's not overwhelming right for someone who's that's not into salad say, not overwhelmingly so i can drink this I, I want one of these every night on the nightcap okay we're gonna get healthy up and i'll be now. back tomorrow <laughs> making that <laughs> drink <laughs> the new bartender <laughs>
<laughs> went to the bar to get some water, and who's sitting there at the bar mm. but my future husband, mm. who never would have been there normally, but he was there supporting a friend who was going through a breakup. And so I did one of those, well, hi, how are you doing? Hey. And, and all I remember from that night is the most beautiful eyes I've ever seen and laugh until my cheeks hurt, and he's the one who took me home. And so it's like, I, I really feel like we have to seize the moment. We have to embrace our joy. You can't let people mistreat you even for a moment. You're allowed to walk away. And so that's how I lived is in that moment. I walked away from someone who mistreated me and into the arms of the man who was gonna love me forever. forever. And then it led to me healing my, my illness. So, bro, if that isn't a story for the ages, cheers to you, your love story, and how Thank you're you. changing people's lives. Thank you. I hope you learned a lot tonight here on the Nightcap, because, man, I did and I cried and everything. This is amazing, and this is delicious. Thank you. Well, cheers to you. It's not always alcohol here, folks. It's not always alcohol.